Hello and welcome to the second lesson of the chair system. If you haven't seen my other two videos, you might want to take a look just to know where we are. But essentially, this is an incredibly simple and intuitive system for playing all over the fretboard in any key, pentatonically, diatonically, modally, any way you want. And this is how we're starting out. The principle is that it's a whole lot easier to memorize five notes than 12 notes, or in fact, the whole fretboard. So this chair shape is what we went over on the last episode. And you should have learned this one right here in the middle of the fretboard and just been playing on it. So hopefully you've done that, you've spent a little while just, just playing around the shape, learning how it works, how it feels, how the notes sound, etc, etc. And now what we're going to do is expand that. So again, this is the chair, this one that started on the fifth fret, third string right here, and went all the way down to the ninth fret, fourth string. Except that you're going to start seeing how the chairs are arranged all over the fretboard because the whole fretboard is covered in these and they're all pretty much in this exact same position. You're going to have one chair which is right beside the back of the next chair. Now, don't worry about this one for the moment because this is crossing the B string, so of course it's sliding down a fret, and I have a number of different ways of getting around that and dealing with that, but for the moment, just don't worry about it. Just worry about these two chairs because this is going to show you how the chairs are in relationship to each other. In fact, the reason I started you out on one in the middle was because I wanted you to just kind of float. I didn't want you uh, to get pinned down, and that's something that, that you'll probably understand a little more later when you get into the system. But now I want you to move to this chair. And this chair begins on the third fret, first string, moves to the fifth fret, first string, to the seventh fret, first string, and then the fifth fret, second string, and the seventh fret, second string. So it's these two notes are right beside the back of the chair that you memorized and played over. And now you're going to memorize and play over this chair. The difference being that now you can move in to the next chair. And this is going to take you a little longer because you're going to be moving between two shapes and much like on the first one, I just want you to play around it. I don't want you to worry about what the notes are or even what they are in relationship to each other, except maybe that first note, which is going to be a root no matter what, and everything else is going to be in relationship to that root. So just play. <laughs> Play between these two chairs. Um, you can play reverse, you can play forward, you can play reverse. It, all of that is going to help you because in the future this shape is going to be used both for major and minor and you're also going to use it for modal playing. And that's part of why I don't want you to get hung up on which note you're starting out on because in the long run you could be starting out on any note within the chair. What's cool about this, and I'm just going to tell you this, you don't have to get into, again, exactly what the notes are, but just know that this chair and this chair and every other chair on the fretboard are identical, or rather, they have the same notes. Now, in this case, you have two chairs which are from different octaves. This chair is a low octave, this chair is the next higher octave, and this chair is going to be the next high octave, but again, don't worry about that right now. Uh, in case you didn't watch the first video, these really four chairs, because this right here is the back of another chair, and this here is the front of that chair, this is all the notes on the guitar. 
at the moment it's all the pentatonic notes but what you're going to wind up doing is adding in another two notes in order to make it diatonic and use it in a number of different ways but what is really important is the information the information which you're going to have with each and every one of these chairs because they're all containing the same information. That, that probably sounds a little strange, but once you start soloing and going over backing tracks and such and so forth, you're going to find that it's incredibly useful to know how to play the same thing in different octaves. And this automatically makes you able to do that. Because as you play, up and down these chairs, you're going to start realizing, oh, I'm playing the same notes. I'm just playing them in a different position. And by going from one to the other is how you're really going to start expanding how to actually play. Because I'm sure some of you are already thinking, well, how am I going to play on a shape like that all the time? And of course you're not. Once you learn these shapes and you learn to play up and down them, you're actually going to find that, for one thing, it is easier to play up and down the shapes, and it's actually an interesting way to choose notes, but you're going to start learning the notes around them, and you're going to be able to play uh, diagonally, you're going to play horizontally, you're going to be able to play vertically, and you're even going to play up this direction, which is actually kind of a a, a tricky way to play, but it'll be much easier with this system once you start learning how all the shapes interact. So for the moment, just work on these two chairs. Again, this chair that is starting on the third fret, first string, and this chair that is starting on the fifth fret, third string, and just going from there. Do that again for about a week or so moving between these two chairs and I will see you on the next lesson.